Hi everybody, this is the movie wrap up for June. I'm doing this on the 29th, like I said before, and if you're noises in the background, I'm watching the Go Girls. I might be able to do some more video, but I'm not sure. I just want to make sure something first, wait. By the way, I was able to talk Crystal out of two of her movies. I was able to trade her something for them. I'll explain when we get to them. Well, I'll ex already tell you what they are. Uh, they are The Orphanage and uh, The Hamiltons. Because I really wanted them movies. And she said as long as I gave her one of my horror movies, in a way it was one of my double sets, that she would give me them too. I'll go ahead and show you what I've watched. I watched Alvin and the Chipmunks, Squeakle. Chipmunk singing sensation Alvin, Simon, Theodore are back for an encore in this hilarious Squeakle, packed with more music, more action, and more nutty fun for the whole family. When a concert mishap lands Dave in the hospital, the Chipmunks take a break from superstardom and enroll in school to fit in with kids their age. But they soon face a stiff competition when they meet the Chipettes, a beautiful, talented trio of chipmunks discovered by Ian, the boy's evil ex-manager. Dinner watched. Casper. Ghost therapist Dr. James Harvey and his daughter Kat arrive at drafty old Whipstaff Manor. Its greedy owner, Kerrigan Crittington, has hired Dr. Harvey to exercise the house, the house's apparitions. A friendly but lonely young ghost named Casper, who's just looking for a friend, and his outrageous, outrageous uncles, Stretch, Dinky, and Fatso. If the plan works, she and Dibs, her partner in slime, can get with their hands on the manor's fabled treasure. Meanwhile, Casper has found his kindred spirit and cat, but the ghostly trio will not tolerate fleshes in their house. With hilarious antics and dazzling special effects from many of the creators of Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Jurassic Park, Casper is a mile and minute adventure comedy for the whole family. And I'm just going to show you the special features. I don't feel like telling you that. By the way, I forgot about the ones on the job in the chipmunks. I then watched Ghost Special Collector's Edition. One of the most memorable romantic films ever and, uh, and winner of two Academy Awards, Sam, living as a ghost, discovers his death wasn't just a random robbery gone bad. To help him reconnect with the love of his life, Molly, and solve his own murder, he enlists the talents of a skeptical psychic who doesn't even believe her own abilities. Ghost is a supernatural mystery thriller that will cross over into your heart and never leave. Nick and Nord's Infinite Playlist. Every Night Has a Soundtrack. After a chance encounter, Nick and Nora embark on a journey through the New York indie rock scene on a quest to find the secret show of a legendary band and wind up finding each other. And I actually forgot to tell you when each one of these was made. I'm a little bit rusty. I don't know why. I'll just go ahead and show you the thing that was made. Uh, excuse me. This is my friend here. 
A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. It was made in 1985, and I don't know. The only thing that's on this is uh, the only special feature is the talent model. Five years have passed since Freddy Krueger has sent, was sent howling back to hell. But now a new kid on Elm Street is being haunted every night by gruesome visions of the deadly Jim Stalker. And if, he's, and if his twisted soul takes possession of the boy's body, Freddy will return from the dead to wreak bloody murder and mayhem upon the entire town. When a nightmare on Elm Street made a killing, horror fans shrieked for more. Soon the diabolical Freddy was resurrected with a vengeance, along with some of the most terrifying special effects ever to splatter the screen. Look for Robert England minus his Freddy face in the opening sequence. He's a real screen. I didn't actually notice. But that's in that um, set with that. You can create a picture out of it. And the one is use the um, poster art. The original poster art. See, there's um, the orphanage. It's mine now. <laughs> Uh, the only thing I have against this, I think it's in a different language. I don't think I have against it. Everything, everything else, nothing else. Luckily, though, I could. Uh, I think it's in Spanish. I do think it is. Because it keeps saying Spanish, Spanish, Spanish. But luckily it has English subtitles. Whoa! How the? Whoa! No, it's like you see how my face went kind of different color from it. See? Imagine doing that. Like it makes my face look white and then make it its normal color. Whatever. <sighs> this was made in. I don't think I'm going to be able to tell you. I'm not going to be able to tell you. I don't know when this will make. Returning to her childhood home in mysterious seaside orphanage, Laura and her family unknowingly unleash a long-forgotten evil spirit. Not really evil. Now thrust into a chilling nightmare, Laura must confront the memories of her past before the ghosts of the orphanage destroy her and everything she has ever loved. Yeah, this is just about her finding out the truth about why she's being haunted. See, there it goes again, making me look like I'm orange. Oh, I think there's a special feature in that one. I didn't notice until just now. Wait, no, Chris, I did trade me three. She traded me three. This is the other one she traded me. But the gray. Cut from her. Now this one took a lot of coaxing. This one in a Hamilton just because it's part of the A films that I for fun. Well, yeah, A films that I for. Sometimes death is the least of your problems. And I've mentioned this before. Made in 2010. On their last weekend together, Megan and Abby Graves are lost in a remote part of the Arizona desert where they are lured to Skull City Mine 
an abandoned mine town, but they soon learn the Skull City is anything but abandoned, and there's no way out. The sisters are now prey, forced to unleash their most primitive instincts in an a in a desperate all-out battle for survival against unspeakable horrors, both human and supernatural. Can they unlock the terrifying secrets of Skull City in time to save themselves, or will they, will they become the latest in a long line of victims? I hope I actually said all that. <laughs> Hopefully I read the whole back. I, my mind's like messed up right now. Keep for I'm keeping I'm afraid somebody's gonna keep walking in. That's what's making me mess up if I mess up, sorry. I then watched Casper's Spirited Beginning. It was made in 1997. A spectacular blend of live action and state of the art animation, Casper's Spirited Beginning will conjure up laughs and boost her spirits. Because he never finishes, she's finished his training to become a terrifying ghost. Casper has incurred the wrath of Kibosh, the king of spooks. But the friendly little ghost soon realizes that he may have enough power to save a town from the wrecking ball and reunite a father and son, fill, filling them with the spirit of fun, adventure, and everlasting friendship. I don't even know if that was bonus features, but maybe. I then watched Precious. I'm assuming 2009, yeah. It said on the bottom what gave it away. Precious Jones, an inner city high school girl, is illiterate, overweight, and pregnant. Again, naive and abused, Precious responds to a glimmer of hope when her door is opened by an alternative, alternative school teacher. She is faced with the choice to follow the community and test on boundaries. Prepare for shock, revelation, and celebration. This is the other one that I traded her for. I'll show you the movie I traded her later. Because I didn't end up borrowing it for when I traded her. Their loss is your pain. The Hamiltons seem to be the picture perfect family. Sorry, American family. They are hardworking community members, giving to their local charities, attending town hall meetings, and always respectful of their neighbors. Except for the fact that they usually end up killing them. And this was 2006. I might end up popping this in again just so I can watch the bloopers. I don't think I'll watch the bloopers. Now I hit the cartoons that I watched. Coraline. I almost wanted to say Caroline. Two disc collector's edition. 
Uh, this is my cousin nine. Coraline Jones is bored in her own home until she finds a secret door that leads her into a world that's just like her own, but better. But when this fantastical adventure turns dangerous and her other mother tries to keep her forever, Coraline must con count on her resourcefulness and bravery, bravery to get home. I have a date. I guess I better look at the Again. Trying to get elbow in the frame Hopefully you can read it. Gonna watch the piss and boots. Made in 2011. You loved him and Shrek, now see where the one and only swashbuckling feline found his fame and a very big pair of boots. In the hilariously funny animated epic, Lover, Fighter, and Outlaw Puss in Boots is off on the adventure of his nine lives as he teams up with Kitty Softpaws and Humpty Dumpty for the ultimate showdown with the notorious Jack and Jill. Here is the true story of the cat, the myth, the legend, Puss in Boots. This is a VHS, and then I'll get to she me the ones I borrowed. Oops, watch that one too. Oh, sorry. I don't have the cover to this anymore, it got destroyed. VHS is actually in really great shape and everything. I bought this from the library if you're wondering. Oh wait, maybe I think it was made. This was made in 2004. Let me just think of it. 1995. A scoop on Frank Bone by Wishbone. Uh oh, someone's created a monster and it's running loose. In Oakdale, David seeks science. Fair project wonders unleashed and out of control. Can I keep it out of trouble with David Capture in time for the fair? Another science experiment also goes haywire. Mary, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein as the doctor. I, I strive to achieve the impossible. I bring a dead man back to life. Bad idea. The creature turns out to be a misfit. I get scared and run away. He gets angry and destroys everything he finds. He must be stopped. Leave it to science. Science dog to track down the runaways. Phew. All these things running around sure makes for one hair raising adventure. Makes me pretty hungry, too. The only difference is between, um, like the real Frankenstein movie, every Frankenstein movie I've ever seen, and this is that he lives at the end of the dog. Because supposedly, after all, all of them, that he dies. But he lives. He just, like, is delir delirious. This is the one that I traded, and I'm going to buy it again. Uh, I traded Crystal for the other three movies. Because in a way, this has got three movies on it. I'm just trying to... Both of these are made in 1975. Mark travels to California to unravel the mystery surrounding his sister's death. He learns that she has been writing a novel about satanic worship and spent a good deal of time at an abandoned church outside of town. When Mark began seeing her in the company of a creepy-looking priest, 
He goes to the old church and learns that Satan himself has chosen him and his sister to be wed in unholy matrimony and become the proud vampire parents of the Antichrist. Tipping the scale, oh, sorry, that was Satan's black wedding, criminal insane, aka Crazy Fat Ethel. Tipping the scale at 300 pounds, Ethel Janowski has just been released from a mental institution. Ethel is full of repressed rage, but she can't get full no matter how much she eats. When her grandmother locks away the food, Ethel kills the old woman for the keys to the pantry and soon becomes a bloodthirsty, mass murdering monster that will slaughter anyone who gets in the way of her appetite. But what will Ethel do when the corpses that are piling with the corpses that are piling up in the attic? And this also has uh, Chameleon Saint 2 on it. It was made in 1987, it was a few years after the first one. You see, 1987. Five years. Twelve, twelve, twelve years after the first one. I'll show you the ones I borrowed from her first. I only, well, I borrowed four. I only watched two, though. Mama. Was this better freaking tell me? 2013, I think. Yeah, it looks like it says 2013. Okay. Give me one minute, okay? Okay, I was just trying to share. No wonder I like this so much. I'm going to buy this for myself, too. Because I can't talk her out of it. Um, is that it's made by the same... I didn't even... I, I never noticed... I don't even can pronounce his name. Wally Miro... Rom Del Toro. That dude, Del Toro. Can't pronounce that first name. A mother's love is forever. Uh, him. The Academy. I'm not gonna say it. Del Toro. I'm just gonna say Del Toro. The Academy Award-nominated writer of *Pan's Labyrinth* presents this supernatural thriller that tells the haunting tale of two little girls who disappeared into the woods the day of their parents were killed. When the young sisters are found alive in a decrepit cabin, their uncle and his girlfriend take them in. As they try to introduce the children to a normal life, Annabelle begins to wonder if the traumatized girls are the only guests they have welcomed into their homes. The, o the only thing I wish is, well, she loved Mother today, you know, she was willing to die with her. Forgive me, I probably just spoiled something. I should have said spoiled, sorry. One of the girls, I'm not going to mention. One of the girls decides to go with Mama, one stays behind. But I think the one that does go with Mama ends up turning into almost like her. Because the moth lands on the sister and it's, she can feel it is her sister. These are from my sister Valerie. The Free Stooges Curly Classics. Uh, it's got Men in Black, Microphonies, Punch Drunks, Three Little Pig Skins, Woman Headers, and a Pony Will Go. A Plumbing, uh, well, one, let me see. A Plumbing Will Go was made in 1940, Men in Black, 1934. Microphonies, 1945, Punch Drunks, 1934, Three Little Pigskins, 1934, and Woman Haters, 1934.
when the three stooges pose as plumbers to elude oh a plumbing will go. I'm sorry. When three stooges pose as plumbers to elude the police, the ineptness overflows and they almost destroy a mansion, leaving everyone with that sinking feeling. A Kenny Dudley Dickerson's black battle in the kitchen is a classic. Man in Black. Medical malpractice is an understatement when <laughs> it's the back of this, it's like bad. Describing what the Stooges do to the Lost Lost Arms Hospital when they dispense an orthodox advice, flirt with the nurses, and battle a babbling intercom system. Microphones. When Curly Curly's mistaken for an opera diva, the Stooges find their calling in, on the stage as Senorita Cucaracha and Senors Mucho and Gusto. Punch Drunks. Larry's rendition of Pop Goes the Weasel transforms Curly from a harmless cream of puff into a vicious contender, but when Larry's violin breaks, it threatens Curly's boxing career with a TKO. Three little pigskins. When the Stooges are mistaken for a star football players, they not only find themselves running from goals, but running for their lives when they get mixed up with the gorgeous girlfriend of a gang of a group of mob mobsters. Girlfriends. Not girlfriend, but friends. I don't know. I don't know. No, I think it was down in the living room. I never saw you bring it up here. Can I look for it later? Well, wait, is Crystal up? When she gets up, tell her to come up here and help me look, okay? I'll look for it. Would you go? Why do you want it so bad? We'll get Crystal up then. No, it's not. It's just, it's, it has to be down in the living room. That's the only last time I saw it. Tell Crystal. Wait, shut the door. It's okay. Just tell Crystal to help me find it. Woman haters. When Larry breaks his oath to the woman haters club by marrying, he is treated like a traitor by his fellow members. But getting out of the marriage may be even more harmful than anything his friends could ever do to him. The Stooges first short was done entirely in rhyme. Three Stooges, Stooges on the run. Get the doctors uh, calling all occurs disorder in the court and pop goes the easel. Dizzy Doctors, 1937, Colin Gulfers, 1939, Disorder in the Court, 1936, Pop Goes the Easel, 1935. The, oh, by the way, you can watch these either in black or white. Black or white and color, sorry. The Stooges discover their... Dizzy Doctors. The Stooges discover their cleaning fluid is actually a medicine and pitch it to the head of the hospital. Soon, they are on the run from the cops and the doctors. Calling all curves. When a prize poodle is dognapped from their pet hospital, the Stooges must turn, to, turn a mutt into a bloodhound to track down the bad guys. 
disorder in the court. The Stooges are the star witnesses in a murder trial, but it's courtroom chaos when they attempt to reconstruct the crime and uncover the real murderer. Papa's easel. The Stooges are mistaken for thieves and hide out in an artist's studio, studio until a suspicious cop shows up and a wild sick play fight begins. As natural as a man can look wearing a black teddy. The only reason I watched this again is my other one was skipping so badly and I didn't get to watch it too good. That's the reason I borrowed Valerie's. Oh, by the way, that the, the Three Stooges and this are Valerie's. My sisters. This was made in 2002. Directed by the guys who brought you. Um, I'm not reading that. Jack Black is Shallow Hal, a superficial skirt chaser who's after a mind altering who after a mind altering experience with a self help guru doesn't realize that his gorgeous girlfriend is actually a three hundred pound not so hottie. Meanwhile, Hal's Playboy pal Mauricio is determined to break the spell before someone gets sloshed. Packed with loads of laughs and non stop fun is the biggest love story ever told. That's all I watched. I hope you enjoyed everything. Bye.